As soon as he arrived home, the Divine Lady's mother was scolding her for having accepted the challenge of the insect that tormented people's lives in society, especially because his objective was precisely to get them out of the Sioux family so that there would be fewer people to share the family property. Her father apparently was already getting desperate, wondering how they would survive if they were kicked out by the Sioux family. But she just replied that she wouldn't know if she didn't try. The protagonist, as he approached the beautiful lady, told her parents to trust more in his wife's abilities and assured them that she would surely be able to do it. However, the old rattlesnake ended up offending Sankian and told him to do what he should have done already, which was dinner. But as soon as he withdrew, the divine lady also decided to withdraw and left her mother talking to herself. While he felt a suspicious look from his wife, he continued to make dinner until she finally plucked up the courage to say something and asked him if on that particular day, he had waited for her to leave work outside the company building again. From his reaction, you could already tell that he did. Since there was no way for him to deny this fact, he assumed that he had been discovered, and she said that from now on, he was no longer to hide and wait in a restaurant. This made him upset, thinking that his wife would now get rid of him as well. But to his happiness, she continued to say what she had not finished yet and told him to pick her up directly in front of the company, and they would go home together from now on. Surprised by what he had just heard, he asked her what she had said but she replied that she would not say it again. Sankian happily asked her if she was serious, and she asked if he didn't want that. But of course, he replied that he wanted it very much. Although the dinner burned, he told the Divine Lady not to worry about her meeting the next day, not least because the head of Quanshui Industries was his colleague and they were close friends. Once he leaves with a smile on his face, I believe the Divine Lady must have felt a little more confident after this support from him. The next day, we see the insect from before talking on the phone with someone who was not important in the story, and we could see that he was working together with a treacherous boa constrictor. She asked her partner what was so funny, and he told her what the beautiful lady had asked her husband recently, that he should pick her up every day from now on at her work. This made even the rattlesnake laugh thinking that she had finally given up once and for all and couldn't wait for her to be kicked out of the family. But a hint of doubt still rose in her thoughts, and she asked the scum what would happen if by some chance she actually managed to make a deal with Quanshui Industries. He just told her not to worry because he had another plan to get her out of the Sioux family, as long as the rattlesnake was totally on his side when it happened. After that, we see the Divine Lady with the protagonist in front of the Quan Shui company, and she was being calmed down by her husband as she was worried about the future of her family. After a while, she took a deep breath and decided to go headlong into this business to try to save her dignity and also that of her family. As soon as she arrived at the reception desk, she couldn't say much as the receptionist quickly told her that they had been waiting for her for some time and asked her to proceed to manager Zhang's office. She ended up being completely surprised by what was happening, and as soon as she stepped out of the elevator, there was a huge red carpet laid out just for her. At that moment, all the employees in unison welcomed the Divine Lady, as if she were really a deity or something leaving her not knowing how to act at that moment leaving her completely confused. The general manager of the company came next to introduce himself. His name was Zhang Liang, and he was in charge of the construction of the new district and also responsible for the negotiations of that company. Then, he showed her their proposed contract, and if she wanted to, she could simply sign it immediately if it was no problem for her. The beautiful lady ended up getting lost here as everything was happening too fast and unbelievably too easy. She even wondered if she could really sign it. Not to mention that there were several other things she still had to ask. And she had no idea why all that was shown just to receive her. As she ended up staying silent after hearing his question, he decided to explain further what was going on to her. Basically, their boss was involved in a lot of social events, so he usually didn't go there in person. Therefore, if she had any questions, all she had to do was ask him, and he would do his best to answer them. After hearing this, 
She said that it wasn't a question, but that they hadn't even started negotiations yet, and asked if he wasn't making any kind of joke with her. In response, he said no, and he wouldn't joke about something that important. They just did their research, and were very confident in her abilities, and they believed, without a shadow of a doubt, that she would never let them down. Finally, they signed the contract officially at that moment. After that, the general manager sent a direct message to our protagonist, who could not hide the smile on his face when he saw that everything went as he had planned. As soon as the beautiful lady left the company, he asked how the negotiations had gone, and she happily, with the contract up in celebration, shouted that it was a complete success. Upon hearing this, he gave the idea that they celebrate at dinner that day, and she suggested that they have champagne. After that, at that moment, she ended up receiving a sudden message, and in the message, it said that an emergency family meeting would take place exactly at that moment. Arriving at the place, some nasty comments already started running around the environment about her, and as usual, the society dung from before appeared again, reminding her of what she had said the day before. In reply to the scum, she said he had better not forgotten what he had said the day before too about personally serving her tea. Then she adds that the negotiations were a complete success, and there was the contract as proof. Even the old woman was surprised, as she wouldn't have thought that she would actually get the contract so easily. The young lady then handed her contract to the toxic old woman, so she could have a look for herself. As the old woman looked at the contract, the scum from before asked how that was possible since someone like her should not be able to do that and even accused her of having forged the contract. But she told him not to compare her with him because she would never stoop to such a level as he would just to get some credit in the family. Besides, she had managed to get them to cooperate with her family without any dirty methods. So now it was time for him to fulfill his promise, to serve the tea he had promised the day before. Trying to evade his obligations, he began to make excuses, saying that she had not even made an effort or anything like that, so it would not count. Then he decided to ask his grandmother what she thought, and the old woman simply replied that he should fulfill what he had previously promised. Finally, a moment when this old phony is not siding with her grandson. After that, the society dung decided to serve tea to Miss Sue. But she ignored him completely and went to her grandmother again, telling the old woman that now that they had nothing they needed from her, she would go home to pack the necessary materials for the next day. And so, the old woman ended that day's meeting, asking them all to go home and prepare for the next day. As soon as the beautiful lady was leaving, she didn't even look back, while the insect from before just stood there with tea in hand, looking extremely embarrassed in front of everyone there. He then swore that he would take revenge on the beautiful lady. Speaking of her, we see them celebrating at her residence, and even her mother congratulated her on such an important achievement. But the old woman ended up saying that she was lucky to have achieved this. But the protagonist responds by saying that it was not luck, and she had done everything she could to be able to get that contract. But because the toxic old woman is too ignorant, she said that it had nothing to do with him. Not least because it was her daughter who won that. Suddenly, the beautiful lady received a call from her grandmother, thus discovering that she had been replaced by the scum from before in order to manage negotiations with the protagonist's company, thus causing our protagonist to start thinking of something to be able to bring down the scum from before. At that moment, the only thing the old woman said to her granddaughter was that they were going to finish this, and then she could take a few days off. But before the beautiful lady could say anything, the old woman hung up the phone without letting her say anything. That is the supremacy of toxicities. An old woman toxic enough to contaminate the entire environment around her. A complete scum as much as her grandson. And speaking of the insect from before, we see that this was all his plan, that he had convinced his grandmother to do this. He further explains to the old snake why he was doing this, and according to him, it was only because she was a woman, and if she ever got power in that company, it would mean that Han Sankian, who was the husband of the beautiful lady, would be in control of their properties.
But the supremacy of toxicity stopped him from continuing with those lame excuses, saying that she could clearly see behind his plans, then telling him not to try to trick her in the future. And so, Dung said he would do things more accurately in the future. After that, she decided to leave and told him to go and rest too, and she would not accept failure as an option at his meeting the next day. Returning to the beautiful lady's home, her mother was disgusted by what the toxic rattlesnake had done, suddenly trading her for cattle dung. But since her husband could not go against his toxic mother, she ended up fighting with him too, wondering how she had the guts to marry someone like him. And meanwhile, we see the beautiful lady and the protagonist leaving the place, and you could already see that she was very sad about what happened. He then asked his dear wife how she was, and she replied that she was fine and was used to it. However, he quickly asked her to stop crying and comforted her, saying that she could rest assured, adding that no one would be able to change her from that job. After that, he made a call to the general manager of his company, who asked what had happened, and he replied that the next day there would be another person in charge of representing the enterprise, and that the beautiful lady had been exchanged for her cousin scum. He then asked if the manager knew what that meant. The next day, the cattle manure was prepared for the meeting at last, and soon the general manager arrived to talk to them. As soon as he went to greet the manager, he already asked where Miss Sue was, and the scum from before loudly called himself responsible for that project, giving the excuse that Miss Sue had fallen ill. So from now on, he would be responsible for cooperation with the general manager's company from now on. Or at least that's what he thought. Not least because the manager said he would come back when Miss Sue had recovered, and he had nothing to deal with toxic beings like himself. After that, the scum started shouting that they were better than Miss Sue in business, and the cooperation between their companies would not be affected. But the manager had heard enough, and he didn't want to hear any more rotten things coming out of his mouth. Besides, there were plenty of companies wanting to cooperate with them, and since the Sioux family could be that hypocritical, he would reconsider this matter, and there was no need to lead him out, leaving the dung from before completely on the ground and unresponsive. When he told the toxic old woman what had happened, she asked how it could have gotten to that level, and he said he hadn't said anything to offend them. They just left as soon as they saw that Miss Sue was not at the meeting place. He had already signed the contract. He asked if he could still go back, and the old woman replied by asking if he didn't know who the head of their company was. She then revealed that it was Yanjing Han's family, but she wasn't going to worry about that, and he was responsible now. So if the negotiations didn't work out, he would get what he deserved. Next, we see the beautiful lady's cell phone ringing, and it was the scum of society telling her to go to the company immediately. But the protagonist replied that she was ill, as he had recently said, and he did the same thing the old lady scum had done earlier and turned off his cell phone without allowing him to continue talking nonsense. Disgusted that the protagonist had turned off his cell phone to his face, he decided to show up in person to see what would happen, and it didn't take him long to do so, leaving even the protagonist impressed with his speed. As soon as he opened the door, the insect dung was about to strike a blow at Sankian, but he easily dodged and beat back the attack with a nice kick, throwing the scum away as he truly deserved. The beautiful lady then asked what that noise was and what was going on, but he says it was nothing, that it was just the insect that had just arrived. Completely breathless he asked the protagonist if he knew the repercussions of his actions, even more so for kicking him. Sankian then said that she had nothing to talk to him about, and that the decision to change people was up to the toxic old woman alone. Therefore, if she had any problems, it was up to her to sort it out herself. After saying this, he shut the door in the scum's face, not allowing him to continue with his words. When she asked what was going on, he revealed that Quan Chui Industries had decided to put her in charge, and they would not work with anyone other than her. He went on to say that the manure was desperate, and had rushed to ask for her help, but as he had said, that it was only for the old woman to go there. She wondered if it was even possible for that to happen, 
But she could tell by his face that everything was fine and everything was going according to his plans too. When her mother found out what the protagonist had done, she started praising him negatively, saying that there was no way the old woman would go personally to ask Miss Sue to take over the business again. But the beautiful lady finally took the lead and defended her husband, saying he had done it only for her sake, and pulled him aside so they could go somewhere else, away from that toxicity itself. In their room, he thanked her for taking his side, even though he was used to it, so she didn't have to do it anymore. When she heard that, she asked why he was smiling, then said that he was clearly responsible behind the scenes for her getting that contract. She also asked why he didn't say anything, since he was once again humiliated for no reason. But he said that she had been humiliated much more than he had, so he had no right to say anything. With that, he made her speechless and just told her to go to sleep. The next morning, the beautiful lady woke up radiant as always, and right after she finished changing, she woke up our protagonist so that they could do their morning run. But apparently, this was not something they did as a routine, so she commented that from that day on, they would do it every day in the morning together. Therefore, it was no longer for him to just follow her from afar. At that moment, even he was confused, since he thought she didn't know he followed her on her morning walks. A while into their run, they ended up in front of a huge house, and he asked her if she would like to move in. He then commented that he had found out that the house was for sale and wondered what the inside must look like. She then replied that he could only be joking, not least because that house was valued at around 60 million, so there was no way they could afford to buy it. According to her, those living in that house were a sign of their prosperity, and even the old woman dreamed of moving there one day. She even says they could keep talking about it. But moving into that house really was something that could only happen in their dreams. As they continued with their run, she asked if he really thought the toxic old woman was going to come over to their house, and he says she needed to relax a bit more in the coming days. A while later, we see him meeting with his general manager once again, and he asks the manager to send someone to go to the villa on Yunding Mountain and buy it. In response, the manager says that the family's money could only be used to further the development of the company, and that was a bit much. However, suddenly, the protagonist took out a kind of black card and put it on the table, saying that he heard that the manager was responsible from the Han family for cooperation with the Fenkian company. The manager then responds by saying that it was really him who was overseeing everything, and he had been friends with Kin Lin, the boss, for many years. But the protagonist replies that Kin Lin was nothing more than a mere image. At this point the manager began to wonder if the young master in front of him was really the boss behind Fankian Company. After that, Sankian revealed that he had established his own company since he was 12 years old just to try and test his skills. He then asked if the manager knew why the company had that name, revealing that it had something to do with always being above the Han family or something like that. Basically, he meant that he was the one who would be the destroyer of the entire Han family. After this revelation, the protagonist says that that card had the assets of his personal earnings and that village would be bought at all costs, not least because his wife would like to walk through those mountains every day. With nothing else stopping him from going against his boss, the manager told him that he shouldn't worry and would certainly see to it that the villa was bought. He said he would never reveal the secret of the Fenkian company. And then we see Sankian swearing that he would give the whole world to his wife if she wanted it. And regardless of what it was, he would find some way to be able to give it to her. After a long time, we continue with Yangtze a father going to answer the door and his surprise was enormous when he saw that it was his mother, who was even complaining about the elevator not working. After saying that he would have come for her if she had said she was coming to his house, she revealed that she was there to see Yangtzea because she had heard that she was ill. When the old snake asked where she was, the mother rattlesnake said that her daughter was afraid of infecting her grandmother, and that's why she was in her room. However, Han Sankian soon said that she wasn't actually ill, making his mother-in-law angry. The mummy grandmother asked what he meant when he said she wasn't ill, 
as she was an old woman with one foot in the grave. She should have known better. According to the protagonist, it was she who won the cooperation with Quanshui Industries, and the person responsible for this project should be her. Su Hei Chao is naturally to blame for replacing the person responsible, but the old woman was certainly wrong too, making this mummy tick by keeping quiet about it since she only knows how to support her toxic grandson. He went on to say that only Yongxia could take care of this cooperation, and asked if the scum happened to know about it. She soon realized that the protagonist wasn't afraid to bother her, and asked if she should abandon this cooperation in anger and go after him. Although that was possible, the loss to the Su family would end up being too great, and the tick flea wouldn't do that. Han Sankian just wanted the old woman to pay more attention to Yangxia, and if there was something that made the old woman angry, he would apologize for it. So, it was for him to reconsider, please, for the Su family. These scum began to wonder which Su family he was talking about, whether it was another family or the Su family of Yangxia. Until the old woman asked exactly about her granddaughter. Speaking of her, he was soon talking to her on the phone. And she said that she had just spoken to Zhang Liang, and he had agreed to officially start cooperating with the Su family again next Monday, which was great. Also, the walking mummy was right there in their house, so surely that old woman must have been very happy to hear that. The mummy then spoke to Yangxia, thanking her for her hard work, and told her granddaughter to come to her house for dinner that weekend to celebrate her success. The beautiful lady thanked her for it, the flea soon decided to leave too, and as she was leaving, she told Sankian not to wait three days out of respect, but she gave him a warning that he'd better not covet the Su family in the slightest. However, the protagonist only asked the zombie tick to keep her safe, because he had no interest in the Su family estate itself. Sunday arrived, and they were at the Su family residence in the garden. Someone commented that this cooperation with Quanshui Industries had made great contributions to Yangxia. The old woman said that her granddaughter would also be in charge of the Western City project that would cooperate with Quanshui, and that this would be one of their biggest recent projects. Everyone hoped that she would be able to handle it. Clearly, the insect dung, along with another toxic snake, was simply disgusted with the First Lady's success. The mummy told everyone there to enjoy their lunch, but she told her granddaughter that she was supposed to stay. Soon, we see her talking about the first lady and Sankian, and the relationship between husband and wife had been great recently. However, the walking mummy started badmouthing the protagonist, saying that he had a different surname, and she was always told to be cautious with him and to think about the Sioux family's assets. A defensive stance was indispensable, while the old woman was bad-mouthing him. He was provoked by the first lady's cousin, who was trying to cause a stir at all cost. In Yangxia mind, she was saying that the old woman didn't know anything because the man she was bad-mouthing was the one who had helped her in that cooperation. Responding to Mummy Tick, she just said that she would do things herself. Yangxia father said that the action to sell the mountain villa was over. On asking who bought it and how much it was sold for, we found out that it was around 100 million. The protagonist commented that the villa she was after had just been picked up, but she just asked him to stop playing with her. She was a little curious because she couldn't imagine who would spend so much money on a residence. He said that maybe those millions were nothing to him or her. He asked if it could be that snake who was making a name for herself. The first lady said that she was pretty and always the center of attention. But other than that, she didn't seem to have the ability to be anything else. According to Sankin, the first lady was certainly even more beautiful. She said that no matter how beautiful she is, she's already been delivered into his hands, and there's no way she can be offered as a bride again. She realized that Sankian had been wearing that suit for a while, and maybe she should give it to him this time. So she called him over so that she could go shopping with him later. He clearly accepted this offer and said that he could carry as many bags as his wife wanted to buy, and if that wasn't enough, he would pay the bill too.